My name is Richard Cartwright. I'm CTO of a company called Streampunk Media. Uh, I'm also developer representative on the Advanced Media Workflow Association board of directors. Uh, and I've been working for a couple of years on the NMOS ISO 4 specifications and other NMOS specifications. Those specifications uh, enable devices in an IP facility to find each other. And not just the devices to find each other, but also to find out what they're doing, what are they streaming, and what is the format of the video and audio that those things are streaming. Um, it's very important in an IP world when you no longer have physical cables between boxes that you've just got packets flowing around on the network to be able to have a layer of metadata that allows you to understand what's going on in that facility. So uh, CBC in Montreal, who are building uh, one of the first large IP media facilities based on the ST, SIMPTES ST2110 standards, think it's essential that they also have discovery and registration so they can manage their facility at scale without having to manage spreadsheets full of IP addresses and formats and, and, and details such as that. Um, this isn't a tutorial on ISO 4, but this is about a tool that uh, CBC have commissioned Streampunk Media to write. Uh, it's an open source tool uh, and we've called it ZenMOS, in other words, trying to make NMOS a bit easier for people to understand and use. This tool is still being developed. This is the first release. Uh, we're going to do some more development work supported by CBC to take it to, uh, to a next stage. But uh, this, is what, this is where we've got to, an introduction of where we've got to. Uh, and it's just a technical demo. There's no PowerPoint presentations. It's just going to be uh, a walkthrough uh, of the technology. So this is NMOS running. Um, to do that, uh, I went to um, GitHub. And there is a project on GitHub, uh, github.com slash streampunk slash zenmos. If you download that project uh, and you follow the instructions, um, you get the source code, you install it, and then if you want to run it in development mode, which is what I've done here, npm run dev. It's Node.js software. Uh, it was built using a, a platform called Electron. And then what you see is the splash screen uh, but what's behind this? Well, there's a number of tabs here. Um, there's a configuration tab, which is a list of tests that you uh, pre-baked tests that you might want to run. Those configurations run up uh, from a set of capabilities. So we've built a set of capabilities for testing NMOS. Um, so, for example, uh, I can test MDNS. MDNS is the way that devices initially discover each other. Um, and by dragging and dropping this component onto the graph, I can be, I can be an MDNS server. I can turn ZenMOS into an MDNS server. But the benefit of ZenMOS is that I can log, in an audit log, all of the MDNS traffic. So I can see, is the device that I'm bringing into my lab doing MDNS properly? I've also can turn this into a fake NMOS registration server. So I can pretend that I'm a registration server, get the device to talk to me. So once it's found out the address using MDNS, it makes a registration and I can log everything that happens in that registration. Um, the registration logic uh, processes that uh, web request. I can store uh, the state of that request and make a response an HTTP response. So I've just wired together a little piece of NMOS out of a whole collection of NMOS capabilities. So let's just go through the list. I can do unicast DNS SD uh, server. I can, be in, uh, I can browse uh, MDNS and DNS SD. Uh, I can check for the heartbeat functionality uh, that goes on between a, a node and a registration server to, to test that. Um, I can check the integrity of references between NMOS resources. I can validate the JSON that comes in, uh, so uh, just to check that it's valid. This is the MDNS server I've already mentioned. Um, if I'm a node, I can make NMOS HTTP requests. Um, oh, that's the node requester. I can pretend to be a node and t test a registration server, so I can go that way around as well. Um, 
I can be a query server uh, with query logic. I can validate STP files. So um, this is what all these cards are out on the table here. It's just a bit of fun, but uh, we've developed a tool called SD Poker, which is for testing SD2110 SDP files. So these are mandated in the SMPTE standards, but referenced from NMOS. So we can test if those SDP files are valid or not. And finally, we have an internal RAM store that allows us to store the current state of registrations. So that allows us to be a faked uh, store. So we wire those capabilities up here. If I go to the audit log, I can see that there's been quite a bit of uh, HTTP traffic and, um, uh, and MDNS traffic. So if I, I have a sequence number, this is the order that things happened. So I can see what happened uh, in NMOS land. I can see uh, an MDNS query happened. I can see the MDNS response that was generated. And if I'm an engineer, I can go into the details in the tab below. But the key point is to really see what is the order of things uh, that happened. Is this a good NMOS product that I've received into my lab? Um, on the registration tab, I can see all the uh, sources and devices, flows uh, that have been registered. So uh, a node is a device, for example, a camera. Um, a device is actually the part of that camera so you might have a microphone and a lens on a camera so the node is the combination of the the lens and the microphone um, they are sources of flows and they advertise senders and receivers so all of these uh, flows and sources and senders and receivers have been registered because the other devices here that are here for another demonstration support NMOS and they've registered themselves with the ZenMOS tool. I can change the configuration, just hit the play button and when I go back to Node-RED I've changed the graph. I can edit the graph to change the, the, what I'm testing today. I can go back to the, uh, I can hit deploy. I must hit deploy, which is over here. No, Node Red, which this thing is built out of, is an Internet of Things wiring tool from IBM. So we've just taken that and extended it. And if I go back to the config tab, I can hit save current flow. save and it had the same name as one that was already there but I can add add new uh, test configurations uh, using that tool um, so one final thing I'll just show is the SD poker tool running on its own uh, so what we do with SD poker is it's a command line tool um, and I run it on uh, an example SDP file uh, and it's come back there and says that this file, this SDP file, is obviously the one that you've copied and pasted from the standard. Because <laughs> that's what a lot of people did in an interrupt, uh, was just copy and pasted the one out of the standard. So they obviously weren't doing it properly. So we detect that. But if I um, uh, add on to the command line, no copy equals false. If it's a valid SDP file, then I get no result. If I go and edit that SDP file, uh, which I can do with Atom, and I make an error in it. And I go back into SD Poker, and now it tells me that there's an error on line eight. It found a media description that wasn't there. So what we're trying to do here is just generally make the whole quality of the infrastructure around SD2110 and NMOS better quality. And when the SD Poker tool is used from within ZenMOS, then if you have a sender advertised in NMOS that uses SDP, SD Poker goes and gets the, uh, the SDP file and checks it and puts it in the audit log, whether it was successful or failed. So, um, so that's where we've got to. Uh, we have a list of debits um, that we're working on with, uh, with CBC. Uh, enhancements um, that they are going to feed back on and probably fund us to complete uh, the tool and do a bit more development work on it. 
Um, and we're trying to kind of hopefully have a very simple interface that just says, goes green if it's a good NMOS device, amber if there's issues, and red if it's a bad uh, device. So we can, we can come up with like that litmus test of, is this uh, a really a, a good NMOS, uh, NMOS device? So that's the end of my demonstration. Um, thank you very much.